So in the previous lecture on the price elasticity of supply, we determined that the price elasticity of supply refers to the responsiveness of producers to increase or decrease their supply relative to the changes in price. And this means that because producers are profit maximizing, they see that there are additional profit opportunities in the market that occur if prices increase. And so when prices increase, as according to the law of supply, they should increase their quantity uh, supplied. So now, in this lecture, we talk about the determinants of the price elasticity of supply. So what determines whether a supply curve is elastic or inelastic? Okay, so there are three main reasons that affect the elasticity of supply. So firstly, we have storability. And what this relates to is that if items can be successfully stored without deterioration, so items such as minerals, wheat, wool, wine, uh, they generally face a more elastic supply line. And so what this means is that the supply curve, which is upward sloping, is generally more elastic. So what this means is that producers see that the price of a certain good or service is at P, say, at $10, they are only willing to supply quantity of Q1. However, if the price in the market somehow increases to $15, they will see that there are more profit opportunities and therefore they can store their good, store excess inventory at the $10 mark and wait until the price increases to $15. And at that point, when that increases to $15, they can supply more goods and services into the market and therefore supply at Q1, Q2 sorry. So what this means is because certain goods or ser certain goods uh, can be stored um, at the price at $10, producers are only willing to supply at Q1, but when the good increases to $15, they can supply at Q2 because they have stored their good, such as wine, wheat or wool. However, services, on the other hand, cannot be stored because they are, they are performed at the moment of purchase, so like, such as haircuts and all that. So producers can't uh, pre-produce a haircut and wait until the haircut increases from $10 to $15. So the, the, uh, the price elasticity of supply of a haircut or a service is perfectly inelastic. So perfectly elastic. So it is determined by the market price. So say the haircut is, for the example, at only eight dollars. Now they can't they can't just wait until the price increases at fifteen dollars and supply more because the market is determined by how much how many haircuts uh, is needed at the current prevailing market price. So our services generally have a very elastic supply curve. Okay, so let's talk about the inelastic supply curve when uh, when products cannot be stored. So th this relates to perishable goods such as bread. And bread usually has a very uh, inelastic supply curve, so a vertical supply curve. This is a perfectly inelastic supply curve. And what this means is you have bakeries and they, they say that they can only sell... Uh, bread that is freshly made on the day. So if the price of the bread in the prevailing market circumstances is five dollars, and they make their bread uh, before they start selling on that day, and the quantity they made was say, say for example, 100 kilos, 100 kilos of bread. But for some particular reason, on that day, the bread has the the price of the bread in the marketplace has increased to eight dollars. And as you can see. Because the price has increased from five dollars to eight dollars, there are greater profit opportunities in the market. But because the bread has already been made, and there's only a hundred kilos of bread, the the producers or the suppliers can't actually increase their supply. They can't increase their supply because they don't have time to make this, and because they cannot store their good. That they cannot store their bread um, from previous days because of the fact that they have to make their bread their bread on the day. So even if the price um, increases, they cannot increase their supply, uh, which doesn't reflect the law of supply. 
And so there's the first concept of the of the price elasticity of supply is that if you can store the good, then therefore the uh, if you can store the good, then therefore the the supply curve of that particular good is elastic is elastic, and also if you can um, if you can't store the good, then the supply curve of that good is perfectly or relatively inelastic. Okay. Moving on to the second concept of the price elasticity of supply is whether the resources are mobile enough so that when prices increase they can uh, they can reallocate to another um, working order, working factor. So you have the supply curve which maps the price to the quantity supplied and so if resources in particular um, the particular items are immobile or there is no uh, excess capacity in the industry you would have a rather inelastic supply curve and this means even though that um, the price the price has increased from P1 to P2, which is a relatively large change. Producers are unable to alter their production by a lot. And as you can see, Q1 to Q2, the magnitude from Q1 to Q2 is not as great as the magnitude from P1 to P2. And this is because of the concept that their resources are uh, immobile. So resource mobility is very important. And unused capacity. So here in the case of an inelastic good, we have a a good that has very little resource, um, unused capacity. So the producers, even though if they, they want to produce more at a higher price, they can't because they don't have the resources available. And also because they can't mobilize their existing resources from other areas of production to this resource to this um, production of this good because the resources are immobile and so the converse also holds true if the resources are particularly mobile and there is a lot of excess capacity in the firm if however if the price of a certain good or service were to increase from p1 to P2 and as you can see this is a very relatively small jump in price than what we experienced here. The quantity supplied by the firm should increase by a greater amount and as you can see from Q1 to Q2 is a much larger amount than the expected change in quantity here. So the second course of action for the price elasticity supply is that if resources are mobile then the supplier would have a rather elastic supply curve and if there are if there is unused capacity in the firm then the supply curve is also relatively elastic and the converse also holds, holds true so if there is no excess supply or capacity available at the firm or the resources can't be mobilized then the firm would experience a rather elastic supply curve and so now we return to the final determinant of price elasticity of supply is the relationship between the time period and the price. So what this means is that in the short term it is often very difficult for firms to expand um, their, their supply following a rise in price for their products. So especially this is because our resources are immobile in the short term because of fixed costs and other such constraints and so in the short term especially resources are immobile they can't be moved easily between users so in the short term we have a relatively inelastic supply curve so you have as usual you have P on the y-axis Q on the x-axis so in the short term resources because they can't be uh, they can't be mobilized or resources are immobile, they have a relatively um, inelastic 
or in this case a perfectly elastic. So if we want to determine relatively inelastic supply curve, we have this. So this is a relatively inelastic and this is a perfectly inelastic supply curve. So in this both cases, because we only have a short period of time, um, producers won't be able to change their price as much because of their resource um, constraints. And also, but however, in the in the long term, because resources are all mobile in the long term, because as we know that fixed costs become variable in the long term, um, the long term supply becomes relatively elastic. So the long term supply is relatively elastic, and this means. When producers see that there are profit opportunities, the P1, if there are profit opportunities in the firm, so if the price of the average good or service in this industry increases from P1 to P2, other um, producers will see that there are profit opportunities and enter the market, so which will increase the supply from Q1 to Q2. Okay, so this suggests that the in the long run the price elasticity of supply is relatively elastic and in the short run the price elasticity of supply is constrained to Q1 which is the original quantity produced because resources are immobile and because there may be no excess industry capacity so to recap the price elasticity of supply and let's look at the determinants again. So firstly, you have storability. Um, if the if you can store the good or if you can store the good, if you can pre-produce goods, then the uh, the resource or the supply is relatively uh, elastic. So you have storable goods, and if the goods are perishable, so such as bread. Um, they have a relatively inelastic supply curve. And also, we have uh, unused capacity. You have a relatively elastic supply curve because uh, you can increase the supply because there is excess capacity for you to increase the supply when the price increases. And contrastly, if there is no unused capacity the supply is constrained to the current supply and finally is the time period if you have time to mobilize or to utilize resources between uses then you have a very so this is in the long run you have a very elastic supply curve and by contrast in the short run so short time period because you can, because resources are immobile in the short term and because they can't be easily moved between uses, uh, the, the, the supply curve is relatively inelastic. So here we go, the three determinants of the price elasticity of supply.